Our next talk will be by Oliver Cook, Jabref as BibTech-based literature management software. He's cleared the stage. He <laughs> may be tap dancing in a moment. Ah, thanks. That, that will help. <clears throat> okay, th thank you. Um, thank you for, for having me. I, I want to talk about my hobby project, uh, Jabrev. Hmm? Ah. ah, and I want to talk to you about um, three things. First, um, Jabrev is tool and the core ideas behind Jabrev. Second, I want to show uh, some features to, to attract you to use it. And um, third one, how we use Jabrev as, as object for software engineering ed education. So that it's not only a tool for us, but also for, for students to learn something. And I w would like to know who of you knows Jabrev? Okay, that's good. And who of you uses it? Okay, that was clear. Maybe after slide uh, five, uh, there will be more. Okay, let's, let's see. This is the Jabrev. Maybe um, it exists since 20 years. So maybe you have seen the old UI and then see, okay, well, this is rubbish. Also, we got comments like, you can't use it anymore. It's, it looks crappy, but now it looks nice because we modernized it uh, quite a bit. And um, if you look into the UI, and open a bit file, you see it, so you see a table of, um, of all entries you have in your bit file. And then if you click on something, then entry editor opens, and this entry editor groups the BibTech fields. So if newcomers use BibTech, they got some kind of orientation like required fields, optional fields, other optional fields in case of Biblatic, some general fields, comments, and so on. And what it also offers, a pre-rendering. And you can configure it um, with uh, the citation styles to use IEEE, ACM, and, and so on. So it, the, a kind uh, near of the output generated by, by LaTeX. And, and Jabrev is not only displaying it as a table, it also allows you to search in the web and to group entries. So this is the, the overview of the GUI, but um, before I, I explain you the web search and the grouping, I want to show you the core idea of Jabrev. And the core idea is to use BibTech as internal data model, which means there's no conversion between BibTech and some in, uh, internal proprietary format. We use, we use BibTech in the core. We, I, I put a um, short example entry being an article with a citation key having an author. And then I show you the data types used in Jabrev. And um, the data types are stored as enum, and we have all standard types in encoded, um, as well as enum entry, like article, and so on. But we implement an interface, so Jabrev can also be extended with customized and entry types, like if you want to collect persons, for example, or um, software things, and, and whatever, you, you can extend it. And also, it's used in the UI. And the field, also same, same idea, having an, an interface, having the field properties, and we, we encode all standard fields and have some field properties so that the UI knows how to, how to display these fields. And finally, at the end, everything is a string, so we map from, from the field to, to the content. But then you see here some observable lists, and this is um, one reason is because we are based on Java FX and directly connect the data in memory to the UI, so if there's some change, then it propagates through the tool and everything works as uh, ex expected. So this is the core idea. And now let's look what we build upon this, this core um, idea. There are features. We start with an empty uh, library, and now we, got, we want to include new entries there. And one thing is, is web search. And Jabrev has built in multiple um, libraries to, to connect to and to fetch them data from. The, the German famous DBLP for the computer science ones is there. There's also the Karlsruhe collection of computer science bibliographies, but also ACM and archive and, and dozens more. 
And we just connect to the service and use their API to include it. And here's an example. I queried DBLP for JEPREF. Three entries come back. And then JEPREF pre-renders the, the search result. And you can say, OK, I want to have the first entry. And if you said, OK, then it goes in, into JEPREF, and there it is without any more things. And then here, you also see our uh, BIM, BIM, BIM tech source panel. And this is the thing, how it's also stored, in, stored internally in, in, in JetBrev. OK, now we got, we got the first entry in. But maybe you have PDF files on your hard disk. And you want to inc um, have a, a proper bibliography based on your PDF on a hard disk. How to do? One possibility is to drag and drop the PDF into JPREF, and then JPREF looks into the PDF and extracts the metadata from it. So in this example PDF, um, it goes like, OK, here this, this paper is from, from Igor and B, which is a mistake. We will fix it later. And uh, Marco and so on with the title year and, and the number was also some, something not, not, not that OK, but the rest looks good. So this is a good first guess how to fix. Then we jump to the next feature. You go in the editor to the top general, to the DOI, and click on look up DOI. Wait a second, and then, then there is the DOI of the thing. Next click, fetch uh, bibliography um, information from, from the DOI. Here's the original one, which we saw with the on being wrong and with the, with the authors. And then here you see the information of, of the DOI. And now you can pick and choose. Do I want to have the original one? Do I have to, to have the new one? And you just click OK. I use that. I want to add, and, and so on. And then you click on import entries. And then you have got the final entry inside um, to JPREF fixed. Now we got two entries in, in JPREF, one from the web search, one from the PDF. And maybe we think, wow, there will be much more and how to organize that. And JPREF offers the, the feature of grouping. And here I put two groups in, software engineering and, and JPREF. And I assign this. Um, user feature paper to the JPREF group. And you see it here in the BibTeX source, it's just the field groups. And the groups list all groups that this paper belongs to. And here it's written JPREF. So JPREF knows, OK, this paper belongs to the group JPREF, colored in purple. And you also see here the purple arrow so that you can visually see when browsing the, through the table to which group your, your paper belongs to. And this can grow and grow to thousands of, of entries. And, you, and JPREF still runs, and you can still query the thing in the, in the JPREF UI. <coughs> OK. But what if you don't start with an empty library? You have got some existing library. And maybe you, you don't have your, your BibTech because you started it at another world, like Citabi or EndNote. What do you do? Plain simple, you go to the file menu, click import, import into, into library, and then JPREF offers a dozen so of, of formats. And one of those formats is uh, Citavi XML. So, so you put your Citavi ba backup file somewhere, and, and then you can import it in, 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 into JPREF, and it works. And we also have the mods and EndNote and, and whatnot. And after the import, the, the entries are, are there, and, and you can, can work with them and um, do some quality insurance so that they get e even better. Speaking of quality um, assurance, and going back to our um, initial example, um, with the two entries, JPREF offers um, a quality check called Check in Integrity, where it goes through all entries and, and checks for mistakes. And here are three example mistakes. Like capital letters are not masked by using curly brackets. You know, in BibTech, the titles always go, do, go lowercase. And maybe if, if you have JPREF in your title, the R should be capitalized. So and then the, um, the thing now says, OK, please check it. Second one was month should, should, should be normalized. The, the pros of you know that, that there are several ways to write a date in, in, in BibTech. And one could have a whole talk about that. 
And um, here, in the end, there was a curly braces and then the month written in, but it should be a number, and, and um, Jeffrey reports that. And, and finally, um, the thing is with the citation key. Citation key uh, derivates from generated key, which means if you have your bib tech um, entry and uh, the, the bib tech key in front, Jeff also offers to generate the key so that you have got a consistent um, bibliography with consistent keys. And let's fix that. And it's easy again, you go to the entry editor, go to the citation key, and there's a button generate key, and you click on it, and it's generated with the default key. And, and you can also configure this, this pattern. As this is like each year, Jeff changes the, the default somehow, and now the, the default is the first, first author's name in, in the year. And if there are duplicate keys, it just adds A, B, C, D in, um, at the end. But you can also configure that, how, how you want to, to have that working. Okay. Jebrev being now 20 years old, or at, at the end of the year, there were so many ideas collected how to fix things. And we have got a, a crude menu, but this collects all our, our knowledge of fixing. If you click on clean up entries functionality, you are offered many, many, many things. Like um, the first example is to move a DOI from the node and URL field to, to the DOI field and remove HTTP prefix. Like normally, if you fetch entries from the web, the DOI is then spread around various fields, but you have, want to have a clean entry and then you can clean it up. And they are more like um, um, also moving the URLs and reformat ISSN. But what's also in, in interesting for me, it's rename PDFs to a given file format pattern. Assume you imported now your whole PDFs in, into JPREF, and, in, and if you have a collection for uh, growing for dozens of years, you've got the PDFs spread around your hard disk and renamed arbitrarily. And with this little help, it just gets consistent. It uses your BibTech key and the, and the title of, of the um, BibTech entry as file name. And finally, this is here the, the expert thing. We've got formatters for, for all fields. And as example, we've got a pages formatter with the normalized page numbers. Because in, in BibTech, you need to have double dashes at the page numbers. And this formatter just fixes it. And for, for the date in, in the bibliotheque case, then the, the date is, is written in ISO format for the month, this month normalization. And then um, for all text fields, we, we have uh, the Unicode formatter because uh, BibTech and Unicode is, is an issue. So we replace all Unicode stuff with the LaTeX and, and encoding. Uh, but we also have the vice versa thing, which means if you decide today, oh, I, I, I want to move away from the old BibTeX thing, I want to move to BibLatex. We also have the uh, LaTeX to Unicode converter built-in, so we can just upgrade your, your, your bibliography to BibLatex. Uh, bib, uh, okay. This was a glimpse on the features of um, um, JPREF. And now um, let's look into the thing, what are the properties of JPREF as project? as a whole. So what, what do we do? Um, what are our core ma metrics? And it exists since um, nearly 20, 20 years, starting in Java and still Java, but we up update. We are currently at Java 21, which will be released in autumn, but we brought a fix into Java, so, so we, so we new, uh, use the newest JDK. We, we got um, uh, 3,200 stars, and I hope that after the conference we got 3,300 stars, so that we we keep up. And we've got um, nearly 90,000 commits, and I counted uh, our 100 releases. And we've got this is the interesting figure. We got 531 contributors in total, and from last year it, it were 100 less. And um, these contributors come from universities all over the world, which use JPREF as software engineering training um, object. And, and I will show later how, how this works. And then uh, 6,000 closed pull requests, closed issues. And we are, uh, the core group is eight people. 
uh, running the project, but all of them in their free time. Somehow, so some, sometimes there's a delay in answering, but we try to, 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 to keep up. And it's um, roughly um, 52,000 lines of code. And we also do have tests, because proper software engineering needs to have tests, and we also do have tests. OK. Why positioning JEPREF as software engineering training object? The observation I did is like if an information science studies, um, study program starts and the students are trained, they are trained using basic examples. They are, they are trained to, to write proper algorithms, like how does a list work, how, how does a search properly work, and so on. And they have exercises there. And then if, if the um, study co continues, they, they learn to work at more and more projects, but the, but the study ends at large projects like distributed systems, workflow engines, Kubernetes something, wh wh whatever you name. But the missing thing is to work on a, a medium-sized project, which is understandable and debuggable, where you can set breakpoints and, and you stop at a breakpoint, and where you also understand the, the context of the thing, where you concentrate on your software engineering skills, meaning uh, specification, um, designing, writing tests, and, and coding. As not only just to program something, but also the whole software engineering process around. And this is now where we position JetRef. Um, be, um, because it offers a um, real world tooling and real world code base. It's not an artificial program, just crafted for software engineering, it's, it's there and it's used by users. And what, what's also important for me, um, I see very good students around in the, in the code, but, uh, and, and they also produce very good code as exercises, but after the exercise, the code is then thrown away because it was exercise only. And with JetRef, this, this, world is, is, um, this work is incorporated in a real world product, so it's made sustainable. And as last thing, if, if a university takes part in, um, um, in this exercise thing, uh, visibility, they can gain visibility and recognition for, for students and, and, their, and their groups. OK. Um, the thing is, how can a team working on, on the free time manage all, all these contributions because we can't have one-on-one -on -one sessions with students and saying, oh, what, do we, what have you learned, what are your experience? How, how can we enable them for self-service of pick and choose of the issues? And our current solution is to, and not just to label issues as good first issues and say, let's go, that we tried as in the last years, but now we came up with a more curated view of, of issues. And you, you, this is a link of the, to the real GitHub issue, but they get, get more properties, and the properties are size of project. So if professors come in, okay, I, I'm in the third semester now, and I want to have something easy, then the recommendation is to have a, a small project, like um, integrate a check for predatory journals. As I give, I've got a BibTech database with some journals, and, they, and, and um, we know there are some fake journals out there, and they should be recognized, and this is some small thing. The other extreme would be a very large project, like we write of JetRef's entry editor. Because the entry editor is good enough, but there's so much room for improvement, but this is a large project to, to work on, but it's, it's a good one for students because it's a focused thing, because the entry editor is one component of JetRef, and you can just work in it. Then we also put the main focus. Like, is it logic only with no UI? Or is it logic and UI? Or is it UI only? So, so that students can, can decide, OK, do I want to dive into this Java FX world, or do I want to sneak around and just do the normal coding? And then we, we also put, put a column like issue understanding effort. Like how much mental energy you do need to understand the issue? Is it, yeah, is it just, okay, drive-by thing, or do I need to understand some, something? And here's like um, 
how, how much we think one, one, one needs to do. But because the thing is, I always think it's easy. Mentioning bibliographies is easy. And, and how hard can it be? But if you haven't worked for decades with li 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 literature, uh, it's, it's hard. So we, we could, uh, the dates were where the example we before, and to explain someone, okay, there are different date formats and how to convert and how does Biblate handle the, the dates and so on, it's, it's hard. And then to say, okay, I want to have in JPF the feature that it handles, it's handled properly, it's hard to, to get what, what a real uh, user we, 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 uh, we request is about. And then we have got the implementation effort where we say, okay, if you understood the whole thing, how long will it take? Because sometimes it's like you, you, it takes two days to understand, but then it's three lines of code. But you have to find these three lines of code to, to put. And, but even if it's only three lines of code, it's mostly like low implementation effort, and we've got also medium and large as possibilities. And finally, the testing effort. Like you know, a proper software product needs to have tests, and how much effort are, um, are the tests. OK. So. Um, now I, um, I showed you the, the, the tool in itself with some, some features. I showed you um, how to perform online searches, how to, how to import PDFs, how to group, um, how to correct um, uh, data, and how to enhance uh, individual things. And then um, what I did, did not show you, but I assume you, you know that you can share these text files using Git in, in a group. So if someone asks, how can I do collaborative work with JPEF, I say, OK, use Git. So and that's, that brings me to, to the end, and I'm open to, to questions. Thank you. I have heard of JabRef from many years ago. But it always seemed like it would be more work to migrate. <laughs> Looks like migration is simplified now. I do have one question I'm going to ask before I okay. let the audience in on it. I believe I saw that in the last year you have 100 new contributors. How many of those are university folks? And are there particular professors that have adopted this year after year? Ah, mm -hmm. as I, um, as a, you, you, university is a broad term, so as I would, could say yes, because there are also PhD students coming in, and and they, because they want to improve the, the, the daily use. But most of them are really students, um, and uh, and the professors. Making it year after year are, are the University of, of Basel here in, in Switzerland and in Greece, the, the, the professor teaching open source software development also uses it here year by year. And we got some of them listed in, in our page. Someone we, we have to have to ask students, hey, which course are you in? Because it's like not, no activity and then <laughs> coming in and then, then it, it lowers again. And, and as usual, at, at these courses, it's like um, semester starts, high activity, then you answer questions timely, and there's no activity, and then it's okay. Now we've got two weeks until we head for this final submission, and please, please help us. And, um, and, and these times, we really try to, to guide even more, like even providing UML diagrams and so on, because, uh, yeah, the thing is, because I, I, this, this work should really be included, and if they have time, then, then and the support is, 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 is useful. Um, and, and, but unfortunately, the sustainability of the persons themselves is difficult because they, they come in and go out. Because I think then, like playing around with Kubernetes and uh, Microsoft Azure and so on, is then, then maybe more fascinating than development desktop tooling in Java. Yeah? But, but we still hope that some, some, some will be there. And, and we also currently have a contributor have, making more than 10 pull requests, which is very, very good to see. OK. Uh, well, we'll start with Boris. He always has a question. Uh, thank you. Uh, absolutely great thing. I played with JabRep, but not much. So probably my question will be very stupid and ignorant. Uh, how scriptable is this thing? How uh, easy it's to just get rid of UI and work with 
Okay, let me give you an example. I have 100 pages of PDF with about uh, several hundred papers. I just want to go through all of them, get normalized uh, tech entries, get DOIs of them, check and so uh, how easy I can yeah. put it into my scripts. Okay. Um, I got the, the, the answer is twofold. Uh, one answer B uh, is uh, uh, we have a CLI but not covering new features because it's very basic and not that maintained and our future work is to do a proper CLI as like because it's internal rework. But the other thing you, 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 I think you can guess the answer. It's open source, <laughs> and, and, and I can show you the main, the main class, yeah, and where you, where you can can start calling the, the things, yeah. And you Thank know, you. if you know one programming language, you know all of them. And then <laughs> so you showed that there you can do pre-rendering of these uh, bit tech entries. Is this just implemented internally in the Java code, or do you actually parse and execute the BST? Ah, um, I also need, need two answers. Uh, first of all, we, we parse it to the CSL processing library and do a CSL thing. We got um, an own customized rendering format. As like, and we've got a BST VM implemented since 18 years. And even we modernize it to Ant and LR4. But we need someone connecting this BST VM code to the UI code somehow. And the BST VM is around and covered with tests and, and really, really works well. But not connected to UI. But this is the, 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 the next step. You know, is, is it this evening? Or? <laughs> well, thank you for, for a great talk. Um, I, when you said it's been nearly 20 years, I was thinking, when did I first use JavaRef? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah 2004, I think. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering, so I'm, you know, my day job is I'm a chemist, so it's very sort of core physical science stuff in, in BibTech. And the features of JavaRef, I mean, the GUI, the GUI improvements have been very nice and the DOI imports have been very handy, but more or less it's worked well for me for 20 years nearly. How, what, do you get a lot of feature requests that are... It's still in sort of physical natural sciences area, or is it, is, are the features you're adding more towards humanities, or how would you describe them? I, th I would say it's diverse. Um, it, one of our maintainers studies uh, social sciences somehow, and, and he has very another view on things. Um, but we also have mathematicians coming in, like with the strange symbols they use. As a, every, a, everything, and I would not see um, as a, some as not, not perceived from the feature because some community being that dominant. But maybe, maybe he he's the except because normally they use the word thing and so on. And we but but we are keeping being asked when will be the word integration be ready? Yeah. Yeah, the, your model of student submissions on your projects was quite interesting for, for general open source uh, projects, not just Jab JabRef. But I wonder, is there a tension between the student passing their assignments and you adapting the code into production? I mean, do you feel the uh, pressure to, uh, to import any code that you're submitted ah. rather than fail the students? Because obviously they, they have a, I assume they have an assignment they, they have to kind of pass. In, in a month or two. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, it, it, it also depends on the professor, on the, on the re requirements. We've got one, one professor who said, I don't care if it's integrated, I just want to have them to have the experience and to pass is to open a pull re request. Which, which leads to the fact that one day before the final <laughs> exam they submit it, we review it and nothing happens. Yeah, okay. But then internally we decide is, is the code good, good enough? To integrate and we fix, and if it's not good enough, we, we just close and say sorry. And if you have more time, please, please come back. And the other thing is, some really ask for integration, but then I've got, uh, yeah, let's say two hearts in me. Like one is okay, I want to 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 be 
hard to them because they should learn to keep up with deadlines because it's, it, it can't be the case that they ask a question, we answer now, uh, within one day and they do nothing and then they come back two weeks later and say, oh, tomorrow is my, my hand, hand in. But on the other hand, I, I want to support them because I think they, they are relying on, on, on us as um, tool provider and um, it's not that easy code base. So, so we, we try to, to support more than, than necessary. Also the, the, the UML diagram diagrams are an example. Also why should I draw a UML diagram for a con contributor in general? They, they, they should learn it, but, but, but what do we to have them going in? And there are also private emails going in. Oh, I've got a bit issue to, to, to choose. I need to, to pass my exam. And the, okay, now having seen one pull request of you, this could be the issue to, to, to go through. So we, so we do both ways, but we, we are trying to first to be hard and to, to appear as hard and strict so they do timely work. Any more questions? Hi, I'm Tom from Overly. Just a quick comment, maybe not a question to the SharePoint. We know from, from experience that there is two types of people. People that think that Git is great, and people that don't want to use it. So I'm afraid that one of the points that will stop people from using JavaScript is that you cannot do easy sharing of the things. So we know that people don't like Mendeley, for example, but they use it because they can share data over Mendeley very easily. So we know that this is a big pain point and really like a, a, a struggle for many people. And if you cannot solve it, then people will not use the product, I'm afraid. Yeah, the thing is, I'm, I, I personally um, favor user experience very high. And I've got my personal view on user experience. Um, one example, if you share your library using OneDrive, yeah, because, or, or Google Drive, which, which is more accepted in, in the community, and one changes the, the file, and the other one has loaded the file in JPF, JPF pops up. The file change on this, do you want to import these entries? And I personally think this is more nagging. I think that I want to have some auto-synchronization going on and not, if I, if I have a group of 20 persons and they work during the day and adding entries back and forth, I don't want to be asked each five minutes, do you want to resolve the, the conflicts? But on the other hand, this is a workaround. I would, would say you can easily share it. You can put your BIP file in, into a OneDrive and you say that the, the PDF directory is, is the same directory as the BIP file. And then, then it's shared. But I know user experience is, is not five stars. It's maybe three stars. But thank you for the, for the input. Okay, thank you.